Hola mi gente, ¿cómo están? Aquí Alba Mar con ustedes. Me pueden decir Alba, el canal es Seriela. Estamos aquí para hablar de libros y algunos de ellos en español desde Puerto Rico. Hello people, how are you doing? My name is Alba Mar. You may call me Alba. The channel name is Seriela and we're here to talk about books and some of them in Spanish from Puerto Rico. And today I'm going to do the mid-year book freak out tag. Yeah. It's always good to take stock of what's been happening during the year, and I've been watching uh, most of the tags when I have time. And uh, it's something that I want to do just to keep myself uh, accountable to myself. So yeah, the first question is, the best book you've read so far in 2019? And that of course is Luz Bella which was one of the first ones that uh, I talked about at the beginning of the year. I started reading it at the end of last year, but I finished it at the beginning of 2019. And uh, I was just floored by that book, El Resplandor de Luz Bella, by Lopez Bausa. Wonderful read about what Puerto Rico could be. Yeah. And another one is The Known World. This was the English version, The Known World. I had no idea that I, I had this masterpiece uh, hidden away in my bookshelves for so many years. And this was a buddy read uh, that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, wonderful. Thanks to everybody who participated because I got a lot of insight from each member in that buddy read. So thanks a lot. This is wonderful. If you haven't read it, read it. Number two, the best sequel that you've read so far in 2019. And you know that I read At Canaan's Edge, which is put away in uh, my boxes already. Uh, and I read that third part of Taylor Branch's trilogy on America in the King years. The final one was At Canaan's Edge. Uh, and that is history at its finest. A well-researched, well-documented uh, piece of history. The whole series. That was wonderful. Number three. The new release that you haven't read yet but want to, and that is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth uh, Acevedo. And uh, the new release, the new release I talked about yesterday is Truman and Puerto Rico by um, Angel Collado Schwartz. Yeah, and I started reading that one already. Number four most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I thought that, you know, since I don't follow uh, releases, that I wouldn't have one. But uh, it, while driving, you know, that I listen to YouTube, BookTube while I'm driving, I was listening to uh, Steve Donahue talk about uh, a month of Sundays which is a collection of excerpts of uh, Eugene Peterson's sermons drawn from Matthew, Mark, Luth, Lucas, and uh, John. Now, Eugene Peterson is the one who translated into very modern English uh, the Bible and in the form of the message. And I've had, I've been following the message since it first came out as just the New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs. That's the first one that came out. And then he kept on working on the Bible, on the translation, until he finally completed the whole Bible in this very contemporary English. <laughs> and I love it. For example, Psalm 73, um, it says here, 
talks about uh, the wicked. Pretentious with arrogance, they were the latest fashions in violence. Pampered and overfed, decked out in silk bows of silliness, they jeer, using words to kill. They bully their way with words. They're full of hot air, loud mouths, disturbing the peace. <laughs> People actually listen to them. Can you believe it? Like thirsty puppies, they lap up their words. What's going on here? Is God out to lunch? Nobody's tending the store. <laughs> I love Eugene Peterson's translations of the message. And there's a video on YouTube. I think it's Sting uh, interviewing uh, Eugene Peterson. Visited him at his home and everything. Okay, so the next one is... Uh, the Biggest Disappointment, and that was uh, the Romance Indigo. Uh, I was expecting a lot more of the Civil War than what I got. Number six, Biggest Surprise. The biggest surprise for me uh, was El Corazón de Voltaire uh, by Luis Lopez Nieves, which was my first uh, and only to yet uh, mystery from Puerto Rican, by a Puerto Rican author. And I absolutely was delighted and flabbergasted at uh, this peak of piece of work, which he wrote in emails. All of it was in emails. And it was wonderful about uh, finding out whether uh, Voltaire's heart was really Voltaire's and how they went about it. And another one, which was a surprise to me, was uh, Three Souls, which I listened to on audiobook, and The Tenant of uh, Wildfell Hall was a complete surprise to me. I was thoroughly impressed with how well the author uh, depicted alcoholism, the disease of alcoholism. Uh, favorite new author? I couldn't tell you because I haven't read enough of each author to uh, choose one. Number eight, newest fictional crush. Well, I don't, you know, cr have crush on uh, any fictional character, but one that I really admired was Yolanda of The Natural Way of Things, the Australian uh, book. Uh, by Charlotte Wood, The Natural Way of Things. Uh, Yolanda, to me, was a symbol of resistance, of hope, and of freedom. Yeah. And uh, number nine, newest favorite character? Well, he's not a character. Uh, he's an author. And my new favorite uh, uh, person is Oliver Sacks and he is a person that I'm going to seek out I'm going to seek out his uh, biographies and anything written by and about Oliver Sacks because after I buddy read that with Heidi over at My Reading Life I was enamored and I'm a big fan so it's not a fictional character he's a real he was a real, living, breathing, wonderful human being. Number 10, book that made me cry. Books, books that made me cry. Well, of course, you saw me react to At Canaan's Edge uh, because sometimes I cry from anger and uh, <clears throat> impotence. And then I cried during Miracle Creek, the reading of Miracle Creek. There was especially one scene there that took me completely by surprise and uh, really moved me and made me cry. And Pachinko, I cried during Pachinko. I usually cry in uh, Korean uh, dramas. And then I cried, you heard me talk about this, in uh, The Poet X. Yeah, that was very, very moving. 
towards the end. Uh, 11, book that made you happy. Well, Luz Beja made me very, very happy, gave me a lot of hope. And El Corazón de Voltaire, because it made me laugh. I laughed so hard in El Corazón de Voltaire. Where did I put it? Uh, well, you saw it a little while ago. El Corazón de Voltaire was a delight. Made me laugh so hard. Number 12, favorite book to film adaptation you saw this year. I saw it this year, but it's from 1983 when I read Jane Eyre. I looked up all the, vil the film adaptations that I could get to, right? Because uh, I don't have access to uh, all the film adaptations. But on YouTube, I found the 1983 adaptation with Timothy Dalton, and that's my favorite. And if I can link it, I will link it down below. It was wonderful. Number 13, favorite video you've done so far this year? Well, I can't pick uh, any one particular one. What I have noticed is that I get the most satisfaction and enjoyment from the ones that I do spontaneously. The ones that I, I feel like, oh, I have to film this. Uh, for example, when uh, Cindy announced the Asian readathon, and I came home right away, <laughs> and I did a two-minute uh, one about how excited I was about that, and I also liked the ones that I did on uh, for Black History Month on children's literature because I love children's literature. And then uh, 14, the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. This year. Well, was Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 50th anniversary edition of 100 Years of Solitude, Cien Años de Soledad. And uh, yeah, the end papers are beautiful with allusions to uh, things that show up in the novel, like the golden fish. And every once in a while, the illustrator, which uh, it was illustrated by Luisa Rivera, has more illustrations in it of uh, important scenes that happen in Seeing Años de Soledad. Beautiful book. But then another one that I just recently got was Mujeres. You saw this in a few videos back. Mujeres is a beautiful, beautiful children's book about women from A to Z in Central and South America. So yeah, and what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I've heard a lot of people say, well, I don't need to read anything. I just want to read it. Well, yeah, uh, I, my take on it is that yes, I need to read these books because, you know, there comes a point in uh, my life where I've realized, yeah, I have too much time left and I better get to reading to these books if uh, I want to get them read. For example, Asada, I want to read that one. I want to read more of the Latin American canon, uh, including Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I want to read Relato de un Náufrago. And I want to read my Puerto Rican canon, including Paliques, for example, by journalist uh, Nemesio R. Canales. Another Puerto Rican author that I really want to get to is uh, a connoisseur on Don Pedro Albizu Campo. Uh, his name is Pedro Aponte Vasquez. And this one is in English. It's called the Unsolved Case of Dr. Cornelius P. Rhodes, an Indictment. Yeah, I've wanted to read this one for a very long time. And I want to reread uh, Samuel Silva Gotay, which was uh, my uh, beloved professor and uh, mentor when I arrived in Puerto Rico. Uh, Pastor Samuel Silva Gotay wrote this book on Protestantism and politics in Puerto Rico from 1898 to 1930 
el protestantismo y la política en Puerto Rico de 1898 a 1930. This is a pivotal book, <laughs> not just about religion and Protestantism and how it arrived in Puerto Rico, but also about that uh, transition uh, after the invasion and uh, how things changed with the incursion of Protestantism uh, in Puerto Rico and what the implications were. And then I've always wanted to read Umberto Eco's The Name of the Rose. I want to get to that. And Miriam Taves, Women Talking. And I want to finish George Eliot, The Mill on the Floss. I really want to get to this. Loved it. And I want to finish Naomi Klein. I have a collection of Naomi Klein that I really want to get to because I admire her very much. And this changes everything. <clears throat> Capitalism and the climate. <clears throat> We're feeling it right now, aren't we, people? Yeah. So I really want to get to this. So yeah, that's the end of uh, this tag, uh, the mid-year book freakout tag. And uh, I invite anybody who wants to do it to do it, just like everybody else has said at the, at the end of their uh, video. So until soon, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, people. Cuídense mucho. Adiós.